This is Vanessa from HIA Ministries and the message today is how to win spiritual battles. A message about a king who won a war without fighting. Prayer and worship is powerful. Together they are power twins, weapons of extreme power, effective weapons that can turn an impossible battle into a victorious one. These are the weapons that move the hand of God. When King Jehoshaphat faced the combined might of three different armies, he was fearful and knew he was no match for them. To conquer these major armies would be impossible. He immediately proclaimed a fast throughout Judah and they seeked the Lord in prayer. This is what the king said to God in Second Chronicles 20. O Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hand is there not power and might, so that no one is able to withstand you? Are you not our God, who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend forever? And they dwell in it and have built you a sanctuary in it for your name, saying, if disaster comes upon us, sword, judgment, pestilence, or famine, we will stand before this temple and in your presence cry out to you in our affliction, and you will hear and save. You see, every impossible situation can never be faced in our own strength and ability. Jehoshaphat turned to God. Now this was the key that unlocked the door to victory. Although Jehoshaphat was a powerful king and ruler, he wasn't worried if his people looked at him being weak or afraid or a king who didn't have all the answers. He had the sense to know that he needed God. A man of prayer, he led by example. He fell to his knees and cried out to God for help. Immediately, he set his face to seek the Lord. He didn't know what to do. He was afraid. But he turned to the one who has all the answers. He knew God was the only one who could help him. The king openly admitted this to God in verse 12. We have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. So we can clearly see that he had the wisdom to know that this was far beyond his capability. In his strength, he knew and understood he was weak. He wasn't ashamed to honestly say before his people, he just did not know what to do. This mighty king openly admits he has no power. He openly admits he doesn't know what to do. But his eyes is on the one who knows all things. He knew that this God was omnipotent and the answer to impossibility. He needed the power of God's right hand. This is how God answers him in verse 15. Listen, all of you Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you, King Jehoshaphat, this says the Lord to you. Do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this God great multitude for the battle is not yours but God's. Then God gave him strategic instruction for victory. He told him to put a choir in front of his army and go into battle singing the praises of God. God says further in verse 17, you will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. Do not fear or be dismayed for the Lord is with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshipping the Lord. Can you imagine trying to explain that to your army? Now this is how we're going to win. We're going to march into battle with a choir who will lead the way and we will stand in front of our opposition singing, clapping and playing musical instruments. It's insane. Regardless, in obedience, the king did exactly what God told him to do. He had such confidence in God, he trusted him and believed his word to be sovereign. He knew without doubt victory was with God. In verse 21, it reads, And when he consulted with his people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness. 
And as they went out before the army, they were singing, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. When they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of the three armies who had come against Judah and they were defeated. Instead of attacking Judah, the three armies attacked one another until they were all destroyed. Judah never fired a single shot. They never had casualties and it took them three days to gather their spoils. It was that much. And on the fourth day they assembled and blessed the Lord because they knew it was God who gave them victory over their enemies in an impossible situation. And in verse 29 and 30 it reads, The fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries when they heard that the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel. Then the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet for his God gave him rest all around. So here we have a crystal clear teaching on how to win an impossible battle. Prayer and worship, the power to wins that moves the hand of God. So you might say, okay, this is just a story from long ago. These are modern times. Miracles like that don't happen. Well, let me tell you something. Nothing has changed. It's all about knowing who God is. It's all about knowing he is the one who has all the power. He is the one who brings in the victory. And without his help and without his guidance, we are doomed for failure. It's about admitting we don't know what to do and confessing God is all-knowing and knows exactly what to do. What is the worth of having a manual from God if we don't follow the author's instructions? We need to humble ourselves and go back to scripture, begin to obey God by studying his word. Read and study the manual that was given to us from God himself. We will begin to see from cover to cover that God teaches us perfectly on how to trust him and remain confident in him. Yes, Jesus, our mighty Savior, has won the war. But until the time comes when we stand before God, we are going to face some impossible situations and mighty battles will need to be faced. And we definitely need to know how to face spiritual battles. This is a war with an enemy who is not flesh and blood. And only by faith and trust in God's word, confidence in his power, are we able to accomplish victory. So you see, the teaching God gives us about the story of King Jehoshaphat is relatable for our lives today. It is relatable on how to obtain victory in impossible situations. It's not just a story from ancient days that we cannot relate to. It is still about prayer. It's still about faith. It's still about trust. It's still about obedience. It is still about praise and worship. And it's still about having confidence in the power of God. It is still about who goes before us and who surrounds us. So in closing, if you're in fear and facing some fear, fearsome battles of impossibility and you feel completely surrounded by your enemy and have no hope of victory, well think again because as children of the Most High God, we are surrounded by the King of the Universe and Heaven's Army. The Lord of Hosts will be with you and He will fight for you. There is always hope. Learn how to fight impossible battles with God. Humble yourself. Set your face to seek God. Sing to the Lord a new song and praise the beauty of holiness. This is how we fight our battles. This is how mighty battles are won. Amen. If today's message touched you, please hit the like button. Please share it. And if you'd like to be updated with messages from HI Ministry, please press the subscribe button. And thank you for listening. May the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you and give you peace.